In the last lecture, we created a user schema and a user model out of that schema. Now, let's go ahead and let's try to create a new user using that schema. So what we want to do is, we want to create a new API and whenever a user makes a request to that API, a post request to that API, we want to create a new user in the database. For that, let's first go ahead and let's first create a route. So let me go to app.js and just like we are creating a movie router here, in the same way, I'm going to create a user router. So I'll copy it, I'll paste it here and here let's say slash v1 slash users. Okay, and I'm going to call this router as users router or instead of calling it as users router, I will call it as auth router. Now, why I'm calling it as auth router is because inside this router, we are going to create all the routes related to authentication and authorization. For example, signing up the user, logging in the user, changing the password for the user and all those stuffs. Okay, so let's go to this routes folder and there let's go ahead and let's create a new route and we are going to call it auth router. It is going to be a JS file. And here, let's go ahead and let's require express. So let me open this movies routes.js and let me copy it from here and let's go ahead and let's paste it there. And now, just like we have this get and post route here, in the same way, we want to create a post route inside this auth router.js. So there, let's go ahead and let's create a router. And here, let's say express dot router. And then here, let's go ahead and let's create a route. So let's say router dot route. Here, let's specify the path as slash maybe sign up because here we want to sign up the user. Right, we are going to create a user using a sign up form. And here we want to make a post request to create that user. And to this post method, we need to specify the name of the route handler function. Now we have not created that route handler function yet, but we are going to create that. Let me just go ahead and let me save it for now. And now let's go ahead and let's export this router from here. So for that, we can say module.exports and we want to export this router. Finally, let's go ahead and let's import this router inside this app.js. So at this line, let's go ahead and let's create a new variable. Let's call it user router equals and let's use this require function and let's require the user router. So this user router, it is present inside the routes folder and in there we have our auth router. Okay, so it's not user router, it's actually auth router. Okay, and then we are using that auth router here. Finally, let's go ahead and let's create an authentication controller where we will keep all the route handler functions related to authentication. So let me go to controllers folder here and there let's create a new file and let's call it auth controller. And again, it is going to be a JavaScript file. And in there, first we need to require this user model. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's create a variable. Let's call it user. And let's use this require function. And there, let's specify the path of the user model class. So we need to move one folder up. There, we have the models folder. And in there, we have our user model. Next, let's go ahead and let's create a function which will be executed whenever a post request is made to our signup route. So here, I'm simply going to export that function and I'm going to call it as signup. And it should be exports. Okay, here, let's go ahead and let's create that function. So this is basically going to be the route handler function for this route okay for this slash sign up 
Now this function it is going to receive a request object, a response object and the next function. And inside this function we are going to write the logic to create a new user. But before I do that let's go back to our authrouter.js. Let me save this file first. Let's go to authrouter.js and let's go ahead and let's import this auth controller here. So again I will create a new variable. I will call it auth controller. And using this require function, we are going to specify the path of the auth controller. So again, we need to move one folder up. There we have this controllers folder. And in there, we have our auth controller. Okay, and let's copy this auth controller. So to this post method, we want to pass our sign up function as the route handler function. Okay, so this file is also complete. Now let's go ahead and let's implement this sign up route handler function. So what do we want to do here? Here we want to create a new user and to create a new user just like we created a new movie object what we are going to do is we are going to use this user model and on that user model we are going to call this create function. Okay. Now from where we are going to get the user object. We are going to get the user object from request body. So here we can say request dot body. This request dot body will contain the new user object and using that object we want to create a new user in the MongoDB database. Now this code here it is going to run asynchronously and it is going to return a promise. So what we want to do is we want to wait for that promise to get resolved. For that let's first go ahead and let's make this function as async. And then let's await for that promise to get resolved or rejected. Okay. And whatever result we will get, we want to assign it back to a variable. And I'm going to call that variable new user. Okay. So either a new user will be created in the database. In that case, this expression here will return that new user and we will assign it to this new user variable or a rejected promise will be returned. In that case, we want to handle that rejected promise. Now, in order to handle that rejected promise, we can wrap this code within try catch block. Or what we can also do is we can wrap this function within this async error handler function. So if I go to this file here, we have this async error handler function. To this function, we can pass a function. And then if there is any rejected promise there, that will be handled by this catch block. We are doing the same thing in our movies controller also. So if you see, we are passing this function to this async error handler. Okay, so for that, first we need to import it. Let me go ahead and let me copy this line from here. And I will import it inside our auth controller.js. And then let's go ahead and let's pass this function to this async error handler. Okay, in this way, we are handling any rejected promise which will be returned by this line. But if we have received a resolved promise, that means if a user is created in the database, then we want to send a response to the client. For that, on the response object, first let's set the status code. And here the status code will be 201, which stands for created because here we are creating a new resource. And then let's send some JSON response. For that, to this JSON function, let's pass an object. Inside that object, let's first set the status to success. Okay, and then we want to send some data. Again, here we are using the enveloping. In that data, we want to send a user object. And this user object should be assigned with this new user. Okay. With this, let's save our changes. So now we are connected to database. Let's go to Postman. And here, let me go ahead and let me open a new tab. Let me copy the URL from here. So I'll copy this URL. And instead of movies, now the resource name is users. Let's actually confirm that. So let's go back to VS Code. And let me go to app.js and there 
we are specifying the route as slash API slash v1 slash users. And after that, if I type slash sign up and if I make a post request, in that case, this sign up route handler should be called. So let's go back to Postman. There, after this slash users, let's specify sign up. Okay, and we need to make a post request. And since we are making a post request, we also need to specify an object. So here, I want to have a raw object. It is going to be a type JSON. And let me go ahead and let me specify an user object here. So this user object, it is going to have a name property. Let's say name is John. It is going to have an email property. And these things should be in double quotes because here we are passing a JSON data. Name is John. Then we want to have an email. So let's say email is something like John at the rate gmail.com. Then we want to have a password. Let's say password is test1234. Okay, instead of text, I want it to be test1234. And then let's also have confirm password. And that's also let's set to test1234. Okay, and here also instead of single quotes, let's use double quotes. This should be colon. All right, so now it looks okay. Let me try to create this new user. So let me click on this send button. And you see, in the response, we have received this response where the status is success and data is an object where we have this user property and this user property has the user related details so it has name as john email as john at gmail.com this is the password this is the confirm password okay let's also go ahead and let's verify this in compass so let's open compass let's go to cineflex and there let's refresh it for that you can click on these three dots and just simply reload data and now you can see this users collection as well. Let me click on this users collection. And there you can see one user object created. So the name of the user is John. Then email is john at gmail.com. Password is test1234 and confirm password is also text1234. All right. So this confirm password is text1234 and it is test1234. So you see these two passwords are different. Now. In the real world scenario, when the password and confirm password is different, then the user object should not be created. The user should not be registered in the database. But we have not yet implemented that logic and we are going to do that in our coming lectures. And one more thing if you notice here is we are storing the password as a plain text, but that is not secure. So before saving the password in the database, first we need to encrypt it and then only we should save it in the database. We should never save a password as a plain text in the database. And this is also we are going to see how we can do that in our coming lectures. So this is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it.